Imagine traveling 10,000 years into the future. What would our planet look like? Would there be giant volcanoes? Would most of its surface be covered with oceans? And what if we traveled even farther, one billion years in the future? Now, Earth is about 4.5 billion years old, and when it formed, it looked very different from now. It was an extremely hot world, drowning in molten magma. Then, over the course of a few hundred million years, the planet began to cool. That's when the oceans filled with liquid water appeared on its surface. Heavy elements, initially floating on the surface of this bizarre Earth, started sinking past the oceans and magma toward the center of the planet. Earth became layered. The outermost layer was a solid covering made out of relatively light material, while the denser substances sank to the center of the planet. That's how it all began. Now, speaking about such a distant future and one billion years is no joke, the chances that humans will still be around are very slim. You see, there are quite a lot of threats the human race might face in the process of its development. Climate change, overpopulation, falling asteroids and comets, ice ages, the sun getting hotter. Let's say you've got your hands on a time machine and on your way to see what our planet will look like in a billion of years, you make a few stops. And the first one is 10,000 years into the future. One of the main changes is the appearance of people. Apparently, genetic differences are no longer regional. Such traits as skin tone or hair and eye color are evenly distributed around the globe. 20,000 into the future, and you don't understand people anymore. None of the current languages is recognizable, and the language people speak only has 1% of the present-day vocabulary. Moving further, 50,000 years into the future, and you realize with horror that a new ice age has started. Niagara Falls have eroded, and a day on Earth has increased by one second. Your next stop is 250,000 years from now. The landscape of the planet has changed a bit. For example, a new island has formed in Hawaii. After exiting your time machine 500,000 years into the future, you realize you might have made a mistake. Fires are raging all over the planet and the air is nearly unbreathable. The reason is a giant asteroid. People didn't manage to prevent it from hitting Earth. You hop into your time machine and set the timer to one million years from now. It seems you're out of luck. This time, it's a massive supervolcano eruption, spewing out hundreds of cubic miles of ash. It's already produced enough lava to fill 75% of the Grand Canyon. Two million years into the future, and people have created settlements all over the solar system. Humans look different on different planets and moons since their bodies have adapted to particular conditions existing in those regions. 50 million years into the future, and you see that Earth is still changing. A massive part of eastern Africa has broken off, forming a new ocean basin. Africa has crashed into Eurasia and closed off the Mediterranean Sea. A new mountain range, higher than Mount Everest, has formed between these two landmasses. Also, Mars has collided with its moon and got a cool ring system, just like Saturn. You make a stop 600 million years into the future and find out that a gamma ray burst has occurred around 6,500 light years away from Earth. Luckily, it hasn't hit our planet. Otherwise, there would no longer be the protective ozone layer and it would have caused a mass extinction. Also, the moon is now so far from Earth that there are no more total solar eclipses. And now, your final destination. Earth one billion years from now. With bated breath, you leave your time machine and freeze in shock. Our once beautiful planet has turned into a lifeless desert. The levels of carbon dioxide have dropped dramatically, and there's no photosynthesis anymore. It means that free oxygen and ozone have disappeared from the atmosphere, and there's no more complex life on the planet. Plus, the sun's luminosity has increased by 10%, making average temperatures on Earth rise at least twice. You feel as if you're standing in a giant, damp greenhouse. The oceans have evaporated, leaving a few small pockets of water at the poles. What about people? You won't find them on Earth. 
By now, they have already colonized some faraway planets and faraway galaxies. You should probably leave this inhospitable world too. The center of the Milky Way is a story of intense radiation, gravity, and mystery. A place where the forces of nature are pushed to their limits. But what if our own planet were to find itself in this cosmic theater? What would happen if the Earth were located there and somehow managed to survive? Let's start this journey to the heart of our galaxy and find out. Picture this. You're floating in space, surrounded by billions and billions of stars. Suddenly, you see a bright swirling mass of gas and dust in the distance. That, my friend, is the Milky Way galaxy, our home in the vast expanse of the universe. The Milky Way is estimated to contain over 100 billion stars and is about 100,000 light years across. In other words, if you were traveling at the speed of light, it would take you 100,000 years to cross the Milky Way from one end to the other. It's a couple trillions of miles. And it isn't just a static collection of stars and gas. It's a dynamic, evolving system. In fact, the Milky Way is currently hurtling through space at a speed of about 1.3 million miles per hour. One of the most fascinating things about our galaxy is its shape. The Milky Way is a spiral galaxy, which means that it kind of looks like a disk with a central bulge and spiral arms. The spiral arms are the areas where new stars are born. It's where the most stars, gas, and dust are concentrated. And this is where the solar system is located. Our system is like a tiny speck in the grand cosmic tapestry of the Milky Way. It's about 26,000 light years away from the center of the galaxy. A pretty long distance, isn't it? The solar system is also moving through the Milky Way as it orbits around the galactic center. It takes about 230 million years for our system to make one complete orbit around the galaxy. Just imagine that. Since the time of the dinosaurs, we've traveled just a quarter of this way. The position of the solar system in the galaxy affects our life in many ways. For example, things like the amount of radiation and cosmic rays we're exposed to, and even the likelihood of asteroid impacts, and so on. Also, thanks to our location, we can enjoy some pretty amazing views of the universe around us. From our vantage point in the Milky Way, we're able to see other galaxies, nebulae, and star clusters in breathtaking detail. We're also a part of a pretty happening neighborhood, with lots of other stars and planets nearby. So we're lucky fellas. But what would happen if we weren't so lucky? What if the Earth was located in the center of the Milky Way instead? The center of the Milky Way is home to a region of space called the Central Bulge, and it's just packed with stars. It's like a disco ball, but instead of shiny mirrors, it's covered in stars. Only this disco ball is really huge about 10,000 light years in diameter. The center of the Milky Way is also home to some extreme environments that would make even the bravest astronauts shiver. High energy particles and intense magnetic fields can wreak havoc on electronics and spacecraft. Intense radiation fields can fry anything in their path, so it's not exactly a friendly place for life as we know it. So, if the Earth were located somewhere closer to the center of the Milky Way galaxy, it would be a very different place. Let's take a look at some of the potential effects. First of all, radiation. As we mentioned earlier, the center of the Milky Way is one of the most radiation-dense regions in the galaxy. It would make life on Earth very challenging, if not impossible. Sure, we have the Earth's magnetic field, it's like a giant shield that protects us from harmful radiation from outer space. But could it protect us if we were located in the center of the Milky Way? Unfortunately, the answer is no. It's kind of like trying to use a tiny umbrella to protect yourself from a massive storm. So it would be an easy win for the galaxy. But it's not all doom and gloom. There are some brave organisms that are able to adapt to high levels of radiation. 
We've seen that life on Earth has evolved to survive anywhere, from the depths of the ocean to the icy poles of the planet. So, let's imagine what would happen if we somehow evolved to survive in these harsh conditions. Like, picture humans with tough, scaly skin that protects them from radiation, and plants with unique structures that allow them to thrive in this bright environment. In that case, radiation could still have some seriously spooky effects on us. For example, it could damage DNA molecules and cause mutations. Imagine a world where plants grow with five leaves instead of four, animals have strangely colored fur, or people have unusual eye colors or other unique features. And these are just some of the best examples. Let's not dive into the bad ones. Also, it could cause us to undergo some metabolic changes. Maybe our bodies could process food and other resources more quickly, which could lead to faster growth rates and larger sizes. Plants could grow tall and thick, and animals would be much larger than usual. There are also some organisms on Earth that are able to bioluminesce. Thanks to high levels of radiation, these organisms could potentially glow even brighter than usual. Imagine walking through a forest at night and seeing trees, mushrooms, and even insects glowing with an eerie blue or green light. Frightening and amazing, isn't it? But let's move on to the next big change, gravity. The gravity in the center of the Milky Way is incredibly strong, all thanks to a supermassive black hole which is about 4 million times the mass of the Sun. This black hole is called Sagittarius A. And yep, it's our neighbor now. Great! And assuming we don't get swallowed by this black hole or crushed by this incredibly strong gravity, it still could trigger lots of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. This black hole would be like the gravitational bully, pulling and tugging at everything in its path. Basically, if we survived this, we'd have an epic surfing competition every single day. Just add a bit of the thrill of risking your life, and forget about running away from the planet. No easy rocket launches anymore. And physical objects won't be the only ones affected by gravity. Time would flow very differently for us. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, time passes more slowly in areas of high gravity. In other words, Earthlings would age more slowly than someone far from the center of our galaxy. Also, the center of the Milky Way is a very busy place. Stars, planets, and other celestial objects moving around at incredibly high speeds there every day. The positions of stars and other objects would be constantly changing. In other words, say goodbye to normal navigation. The GPS system would likely be unreliable due to the strong gravitational forces and high radiation. So, if you accidentally got lost in a glow-in-the-dark forest with some creepy animals, good luck! But it's not all bad. The center is also home to molecular clouds. These are the regions of space where new stars are born. And the Milky Way in general has some pretty amazing sights to offer. For example, stunning nebulae like the Orion Nebula and the Eagle Nebula which are visible with telescopes or even just a good pair of binoculars. So, if Earth were located in the center of the Milky Way, we would have a front row seat to some of the most spectacular cosmic events. Wouldn't that be awesome? Overall, if Earth were located in the center of the Milky Way, it would be a very different place. Of course, we all understand that our planet wouldn't have survived such a change. But it's still pretty interesting to imagine how our life would flow if we were there. And judging by what we just discussed, it wouldn't be pretty. So let's treasure and appreciate our small, quiet solar system. The broad, flat-brimmed hat has become something of a trademark of every cowboy out there. But nobody actually wore them on the frontier. Cowboys, or more accurately, cattle hands, were mostly illiterate men who did dirty jobs in equally dirty rags. And those hats were expensive. Like, really expensive. Such men couldn't afford them even if they wanted to. And they didn't. Broad hats were impractical, since they were heavy and got in the way. Most cowboys favored light bowler hats instead. Now, 
imagine that legendary Clint Eastwood squint from beneath the brim of a bowler. Nah, let's keep the broad ones in the westerns. How come firefighters extinguish fire so fast? Is their water wetter or something? Well, actually, yes, it is. It's a pretty recent addition, but firefighters add certain reagents to the water to reduce its surface tension. As a result, it becomes easier to spread and soak into objects. The finding of a jar of perfectly edible thousand-year-old honey during archaeological excavations gave birth to a myth that honey can never spoil. If you buy some honey, take off the lid and store it in a humid environment. The treat will spoil quite soon. On the other hand, honey has antibacterial and antifungal properties, so no germs can live inside it if stored properly. With the lid closed and the conditions dry, it really won't go bad in your entire lifetime. You might have heard that the pink hue your strawberry frappuccino has to it is achieved thanks to crushed bugs. And that was true until 2012. Little critters called cochineal bugs were ground up to make red dye. This method is still used by many companies, but you won't find the bugs in your coffee anymore. That's good. You surely heard the story about Albert Einstein having been really bad at math in school. To all those who think they can match his genius even having bad grades, sorry. When he was told this story in 1935, Einstein just laughed and said he had mastered differential and integral calculus before he was 15. I just hope it wasn't on the school curriculum back then. The myth was invented in the 1930s by Ripley's Believe It or Not, a newspaper dealing in bizarre facts. The trouble is, it never cited any credible sources, so not a single claim about Einstein stood up to scrutiny. Now, when people say the sixth sense told them something, they mean something apart from the usual touch, taste, smell, sight, and hearing. But the phrase could be correct as well if we said the 8th sense, or even the 25th sense. Hey, I can always use 25 cents. <clears throat> there are several points of view on the actual number of our senses, with the largest one discussed being 53. Proprioception, for example, is the feeling of your body position. If you can close your eyes and touch your nose with a finger, congrats, you have it! Okay, you probably heard a lot of stories about various things hiding on the dark side of the moon. There's just one catch here. There's no such thing as the dark side of the moon. Our natural satellite is tidally locked with the Earth, which means we're always looking at the same side of it. But the sun doesn't follow the same rule, and it shines on the other side of the moon just like on everything else. And it's only logical. Solar eclipses wouldn't be able to occur if the sun didn't bring light to the other side of the moon. After all, it's exactly the moon blocking the sun at those points. By the way, eclipses happen because the sun is 400 times more distant from our planet than the moon, but it's also 400 times bigger. So the effect is full blocking of all light that only leaves that ominous ring. Now, if you happen to be a sushi lover, you might already know that the green paste they usually serve with it isn't actually wasabi. It's simply horseradish, dyed green to look exotic. The real thing has a milder taste, and it's pretty expensive, too. It's easy to tell if it's real or not, too. If it isn't made right in front of you, then it's not wasabi. Speaking of whales, and I was about to, the blue whale is often referred to as the largest living thing that ever, you know, lived. And it's true that this gentle giant is enormous. But alas, it's not even close to the real record holder, honey mushroom that resides in the Blue Mountains of Oregon. Looking at it from the surface, you won't be able to tell that you're staring at something massive. In reality, though, it's a single fungus that covers an area of 1,350 soccer fields, most of it underground. What's more, it's not just old, but pretty much ancient. Its age is estimated at 2,400 years, but might be up to 8,650 years. No one can say for sure. Still, the blue whale is not even second in a row. That honor goes to Pando, the trembling giant. It's a quaking aspen in south-central Utah that looks like a huge forest, but is actually a single organism. All the trees in a 108-acre area grow from a single root system. But what's even more astounding than its size is Pando's weight. Taken together, its roots and trees weigh about 6,000 tons. 
which makes it the heaviest organism in existence. It might be okay to deflate your tires a little bit when you're stuck in deep snow, but driving like that when you're out of control is an unreasonable risk. Deflated tires decrease your level of control over the car, especially on an icy road, and you're more likely to get stuck in a snowdrift again. So, instead of deliberately deflating your car's tires in the winter, make sure you have chains or studs on them for better grip, and put some essentials into your trunk to help you out in case of trouble. Those include a shovel, duh, a tow rope, and a bag of sand, salt, or if you don't have either, some kitty litter. Best if it's mineral-based, of course, but even the silicone kind will do in a pinch. Diamonds are very special gems, and their cost is justified by their beauty and rarity, right? Eh, not exactly. In fact, they're not as rare as we've been all led to believe, and scientists have even found a way to create artificial diamonds, making their production rather easy. But they still cost a lot, though. The secret lies in a really good marketing campaign that dates back a hundred years. The company that mined and sold diamonds successfully spread myths about these gems around the world. Not only they convinced everyone on the planet that diamonds are rare and thus have to be expensive, but also made everyone believe that only these rocks are synonymous with romance and engagement. Despite bats being disoriented in the light of day, that's not because they're blind. Their eyesight is actually even better at nighttime than ours. They just see everything in the shades of black and white, so it's hard for them to navigate when there's so much light around. The myth about bats being blind probably arose from the fact that they use sonar to find their way. Now, I probably don't need to tell you our planet isn't round. Its shape even has a special name to it, geoid. But saying it's closer to elliptical or some other proper shape would be incorrect either. The Earth constantly spins at a mind-blowing speed, making it a bit elongated, true. But the tectonic plates moving inside it also affect its shape. Although that twisting and churning underneath is very slow, a couple of inches per year, tectonic movements make the Earth's surface rise at some places and dip in others. Eventually, the planet looks more like a misshapen balloon than anything else.